I smoke weed and I consider myself a success. And I want to share with you the one thing that I feel got me to this point. Have you guys ever been in a place where you felt lost and helpless, not knowing which way to go? I was there, big time. And now, like Amy said, I am a co-founder of a chain of dispensaries. We've got a grow going. Things are going what I would consider really well right now. And you can kind of consider it one way that there's two kinds of people in this world. Those that smoke pot and those that need to. <laughs> And I've been both. And so ultimately, I really didn't know what the hell to talk to you guys about. I mean, we got the biggest heads in the cannabis industry. We got aficionados, and if you don't know what's going on, turn to your neighbor, you're in Portland. So I'm like, what the hell am I gonna do here? So I went from bankruptcy, losing a house, cars. Uh, I was in a job that was horrible, drove me to drug addiction and now I have a great business partner for dispensaries, and what happened was I utilized cannabis to help me find my passion. And we've heard some excellent speeches on passion, and so this is, I wasn't aware that there was gonna be somebody else, so. <laughs> I'm gonna go with what I've got. So um, what I did is, I made a list of goals and dreams. This was a, a process out of Jack Canfield's book, Power of Focus. I was all fucked up on pain pills on my couch and wrote a list. I wanted to get off this track. Uh, at one point, it was horrible. It was, I mean, you are addicted to a form of heroin, basically, and I had to get off the train. I was addicted, and I did end up getting free with the help of cannabis. It was my gateway out. And I got clear about what I wanted and I moved in the direction of my dreams. I lost that list and years later I found it. It was fucking eerie. I mean, it was like I picked my life out of a goddamn shopping list and I wanted to be in a job that I loved. I mean, I was selling cars at the time. I didn't even think the cannabis thing was a thing. I was just smoking. And I wanted to be in the industry I enjoyed. I wanted to have a great friend. My business partner ended up being one of the best friends I've had. All of these things, bam, 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 down the line. And what I came to understand was having that list of goals and dreams of the hundred things that I wanted to be, do, and have, it set a little star in the future. I had a place I wanted to go, and I forgot the list. I mean, I was fucking high off my ass, and I was writing this list as a thing to do, and then I just put it in a drawer. But that set an intention. And in the little day-to-day -day decisions, the little teeny decisions that you make to get through your day, my subconscious had a path to where I wanted to go. And I truly believe that if you put something in writing by hand, not on a computer, not on your phone, write it out by hand on paper, it starts a process. And why this is important to do is because you all have a unique creativity. Everybody has something that only you can do the way you do it. Everybody can do the dishes, but you can do them the way only you can do them. For example, but... <laughs> a little bit high. So, <laughs> but it's true. That there's only, only you show up to life the way you show up to life. If there is somebody out there that needs that, our job pays the bills. Our day-to-day -day job pays the bills. What we do in our spare time determines if we're rich or poor. And, and that kind of sunk in. And in with holding my baby daughter, it was about seven years ago today, it, it, it's her seventh birthday today. Uh, we had a party yesterday. So it's, it's, Holding my baby girl while I'm typing with one hand my business plan, and I had on an envelope a quote from Hunter S. Thompson. It said, when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. <laughs> and I'm that weird dude. So ask yourself, what is life pushing you to go pro in? And like Joseph Campbell says, follow your bliss. 
and it's not your bliss is in like getting hammered or having a bunch of chicks or whatever, but your bliss is that thing that you can't not do. That thing that's just in you. You you want to create something. You know, you're you're a computer programmer, but you're just crocheting all the time at night. I don't know, but like there's that thing that wants to come out. And your unique creativity is what you want to give. And it is what somebody or some people in the world needs. And ultimately, if you look at like these rich people, Oprah and Bill Gates and things, you get to the top of the heap. What do they do for their real kicks? They give. And what you want to give and being able to allow yourself to give that is the key to happiness. It's giving that is the is where happiness is. And in starting my hydro store in 2010, I had to think long and hard. My dad, it was a different time then. And I was starting my garden store with a young family. And my dad said, your, your kids, and he, this was very loving. My father's very loving and supportive, but he'll give me the straight shit. He said, your kids could be very stigmatized. You could lose your reputation. This could, this is a hydro store. This is not dispensary. This is just growing weed, or you know, nod, nod, wink, wink, growing weed. But he, I mean, he really laid it down. And I, I had to tell my financier and, and mentor, I said, I got to put a pause on this. He was ready to write a $30,000 check. I said, you got to give me a night. I, I got I to put a pause. I got I to gotta get back to you. And I got high. I got quiet and I got still and I listened inside myself and that all sounds super serious but what came out was no fuck that I'm moving in the direction of my dreams yeah. 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 so taking the time to be still and quiet comes more easily through cannabis it's like a meditation you can tap that spark within yourself and that spark connected to in meditation will help you be better at what you're good at. You know, uh, I think Einstein said something like, if you judge a fish by how it can climb a tree, it'll always feel it's stupid. You know, we, we try to do things that are not ours to do, but you need to be more you. That's your job in the world, is to find out what you are and become more it, not somebody else. And so getting back to that energy exchange with the universe, which I think is fucking cool, but. Uh, what it is, and, and I, this comes from a, a reputable source of somebody that knows indigenous wisdom and, and how plants and medicines are perceived, and the laid back and lazy feeling on cannabis, since energy cannot be created or destroyed, that laid back feeling is an energy exchange with the universe, and we need to be careful with that, because we often feed our energy into the social machine into shopping, into watching the news, into Facebook. But like Hutchinson's Law says, any occurrence requiring undivided attention will be accompanied by a compelling distraction. Kind of like Squirrel's Law. So anything you need to focus on, of course there's going to be something more important to do that, you know? Get to your thesis and your girlfriend rings. When things come to knock you off your goal, Say, no, fuck that. I'm going in the direction of my dreams. And make the time to use more cannabis in a focused way. You probably are not using enough. <laughs> this is Oregon. So make a list. A hundred if you can. I didn't get to uh, like 54 or something. But get a list of a hundred things if you can that you want to be, do, and have. Write it on, by hand on paper. Amy, do I have a green bag back there you can bring out for me? Uh, and then let that go. Let it, those, those goals and stuff, just let them go. And the key here is don't limit yourself. It hurts everyone if you play small. It hurts everyone if you play small. So smoke weed and dream big. <laughs>
You better 